Uh, welcome to this lecture on instrument transformers and uh, and the lecture on fundamentals of protection. We covered uh, um, the, the concept of uh, relaying which is monitoring the system for any faults or abnormality and then it takes the proper action by isolating the faulted equipment as soon as possible. So one of the inputs to this was uh, either current transformer or the, uh, is a current transformer or it could be a voltage transformer. A current transformer essentially steps down the high current to the relay uh, to the input level. Similarly, a voltage transformer steps down the primary voltage to a manageable level of 66 or 150 volts as we uh, discussed in, uh, in that lecture on uh, fundamentals. Applications of the current transformers is for metering and relaying purposes. Uh, and there are different types. We will go through this. Uh, I'm just mentioning it here. One is called a bushing CT, second is a freestanding, third is an auxiliary, and fourth is an optical CT. Uh, before we get into the current transformers, we look at the transformer fundamentals, whether it is a voltage or a current transformer. Uh, the power in to the primary winding will be equal to power out. So VP times IP must be equal to VS times IS, where P is the primary winding and S is, uh, is a secondary winding. And then the ampere terms must be balanced, that is, IP times NP must be equal to IS times NS. So if you take that, uh, look at that, then the voltage ratio from primary to secondary will be yeah, will be same as the turns ratio of the transformer, NP to NS, and then whereas the current uh, is equal to inverse of the ratio of the transformer. So IP by IS is NS by NP. And then uh, because you have a magnetic cup, uh, core, which is linking the two magnet, uh, two windings, you need some energy and the current in maintaining the flux uh, linkage. And then this is called the magnetizing current. And then as we mentioned it here, it is only 1% of the rated current of the transformer. And then, uh, uh, you know, if you fi find the relationship in a voltage transformer, the secondary current is uh, just uh, voltage on the secondary side divided by the amount of uh, ohmic burden that is connected, ohmic uh, load. Uh, burden and load, I will be interchanging it very often. It is just the load connected on the secondary side. Is, we call this burden in uh, trans instrument transformer uh, 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 vocabulary. So the current is just a voltage on the Vs divided by the load, and that is Is, and that is reflected onto the primary side. And then uh, we use some current to magnetize the core. So the primary current is nothing but uh, the uh, IS multiplied by, uh, divided by the N, uh, or you know, IS multiplied by the turns ratio on the secondary side, I tie IS times NS if it's ampere turns, and then plus uh, the magnetizing current, which I said is only 1%. Uh, coming back to this, if we keep the secondary side open on a voltage transformer, then uh, what, what happens here is you just see a magnetizing current which is flowing on the primary side which is as I mentioned it is only 1%. Whereas if you short it, the short circuit current could be 10 times to 20 times uh, the uh, rating, normal rating of the transformer and you might damage this. The current is only limited by the impedance of the transformer between uh, and also the source. Let's look at the current transformers. Uh, in the case of voltage transformer, primary current was determined by the amount of current which is load connected on the secondary side. Whereas in the case of a current transformer, it is monitoring the current going on a transmission line or any through or current through an equipment. So it has no control on the amount of current flowing through that. So that is determined only by the external load. So you have the current flowing through that on the primary and normally it is only one turn as we see here in this example this is just the lead which is going into the breaker which is only one turn and you have a transformer core second uh, current transformer sitting here uh, which is mounted outside uh, this is for a breaker this is how it, uh, it is mounted uh, now if you look at that uh, then the secondary current will be the, just uh, the primary current divided by this and that is produced because of the ampere turns that tries to push the current through whatever burden that is connected. So 
if uh, it is uh, if the burden is nothing but the load connected on the secondary side which could be a relay or a, a meter so the voltage that is developed across the secondary side is uh, is uh, determined by the ohmic value of the burden multiplied by the secondary current which is nothing but uh, uh, the primary current divided by the number of turns on the secondary side so if you short it here what happens it just uh, uh, balances the ampere turns and there is no voltage that is developed across the secondary side so it provides a path for the secondary current to flow whereas if you open circuit this the primary current is continuously going and then the secondary side it tries to push current through an open circuit so you get very high voltages on the secondary side uh, even though there is, it cannot push a current you get very high voltages and then the CT saturates and it gets damaged also. So in the case of a voltage transformer you cannot short the secondary side and in the case of a current transformer you cannot keep it open. Okay, this is just a picture of that and also uh, the primary rating of that is not determined uh, by uh, uh, by the CT itself. Uh, you know if you are using it on a transformer you have an ability to overload the transformer to much higher than its nominal rating say for example 150 or 160 percent for a, a short amount of time. So the CT also must be able to take care uh, you know uh, must be able to carry that overload uh, uh, for the same amount of time. So if uh, because it is not an integral part uh, of that particular, it is an integral part of that particular uh, breaker or a transformer, these CTs also must be rated as their uh, equipment on which it, these are mounted. The next one is freestanding CTs. These are used on live tank breakers where you don't have bushings. Uh, uh, the, the interrupter is insulated and then it is standing by itself and there is not enough space to put the course on the and there is no place for that so you have a separate uh, freestanding CT on its own insulator here if you look at it uh, uh, these are the primary windings it comes down here and then goes through four cores and then it goes back there are four cores here and the secondary windings are coming out of this this could be either at the bottom of the tank or at the top of the tank it depends on the manufacturer now as far as the classifications are concerned we have to see what is the purpose of this current transformer whether it is used for metering or for relaying. If it is used for metering that means we want to continuously monitor the load and then uh, you know if it is billing then you have to charge them accordingly depending on the current. So our, our region of interest is from no load to full load uh, up to the rated uh, uh, current of the equipment on which these are mounted. Whereas in the case of protection class, uh, these are used for uh, determining the abnormal conditions. Uh, that is, uh, um, uh, you know, when the fault occurs. So the fault currents could be as high as 10, 20 to 25 times the full load current. So our uh, region of interest is not the normal operating range, but the fault range where how well this CT can reproduce uh, this waveform or step down this current to the secondary side which is monitored by the relay. So auxiliary CTs uh, is just uh, you know just to match the ratios so that we want the desired CT ratio from primary to the secondary relay. So metering CT specifications are just a number B um, uh, followed by a letter B and then again followed by another number. The first number, which is, uh, for example, in this case, 0 0.3, B1.0. 0. 0. 0.3 specifies the error when the current through that is about 2000 amps. This is an example for 2005. When the current through the CT primary current is 2000 amperes, the secondary side, if it has got an one ohm, one ohm load or the burden connected to that, the accuracy, the error cannot exceed 0.3%. And then our American National Standard also specifies that this error, error cannot be twice the specified value when the current is only 10% through the uh, current transformer. So at 200 amps, it, it cannot exceed 0.6% and at, at uh, 2000 amps, it cannot exceed 0.3. But this is with a burden of 1 ohm connected. 
<coughs> and also we not only worry about the ratio error and we also look at the phase angle error. Suppose you are uh, looking at the wattage, watts uh, consumed by a customer, uh, kilowatts uh, consumed by the customer, then you have to make sure that the current produced on the secondary, reproduced on the secondary side by the CT has, uh, is in phase with uh, the primary side. So, but there are some inaccuracies just like the ratio, uh, you have a ratio error here and you have the phase angle error which is uh, uh, given here. This is given in minutes. So this is called a parallelogram and it is uh, specified, it is supplied by the manufacturer. As far as the burden is concerned, uh, metering burden is mostly resistive. Uh, what it means is uh, it is a little bit inductive but mostly resistive. So if it is connected across the secondary of the CT, the current through that produces a voltage which is leading the current because it is an inductive circuit and it's an RL circuit. So the current leads, uh, relaxes the voltage by a certain angle and cosine of that angle is 0 0.0.9. So they have specified actual inductance and real resistance values for these uh, standard burdens uh, for which the CT is rated and then specified. Whereas in the case of a protection class, there are three levels. One is called the C class, the other one is T class, and the other one is X class. C is, has got a low leakage uh, between the primary and secondary, and then the ratio can be calculated. Whereas in the T class, there is so much of leakage uh, reactance uh, between high leakage between uh, the primary and secondary. So you uh, connect a specified uh, a relay or whatever burden you are connecting, and then you pass the current, a uh, specified current on the primary and calculate uh, the accuracy through tests and it has to be determined only through tests. Most of the times protection class we use the C class uh, in, uh, in all our applications. Uh, this is generally true. And the X class is used for 1% accuracy at rated uh, current and then the user specified accuracy 20 times the rated current. Uh, this is specified with ANSI uh, standard C57.13. IEEE standard also. It is it is also an IEEE standard. Uh, uh, specified in the case of this, it is specified as a C class, and then you say it is a voltage rating. Uh, it is given as the next number on that. An example here is C800. What it means is the CT when uh, can produce 800 volts on that at the terminals of the secondary uh, when 8 ohms is connected across uh, is connected as a burden and then 100 amps is flowing through that 8 ohms. So this KCT is capable of developing 100 or 800 volts to push 100 amps through 8 ohms uh, burden. And whereas the burden in the case of uh, protection class is defined a little different than that of the metering uh, where mean metering the power factor was 0.9 here it is uh, 0.5. That means here we are connecting coils and all it might be more inductive uh, in case of uh, protection. Okay, and also if you look at it, the secondary has a, uh, has a winding which is normally a 10 uh, gauge uh, wire or a 14 gauge wire or a 12 gauge wire depending on um, the rating of the CT. And here is an example where we have taken 1200 to 5. The primary number of turns is only 1. So the secondary number of turns has to be 240 which is the ratio of the currents, uh, 1200 to 5. And now this winding, it could be a 10 gauge wire or uh, you know, whatever gauge wire it is, it has some resistance. And the manufacturer who is supplying his CT will provide this information. And typical values are around 0.002 I've taken. It could be very, it could be higher or lower than this number, but I've taken this as an example. So the resistance offered by the winding itself is about 0.48 ohms. So if you have a resistive burden of 4 ohms connected on the secondary side, and I know that this has to develop 400 volts to push 100 amps through 4 ohms burden. So the internal voltage that has to be developed inside the CT is 448. The CT manufacturers provide um, curves called excitation curve. And then the second thing here I want to tell is that if it is 100 amps flowing through that, the C rating also specifies 
that the accuracy, the error cannot exceed 10% of its rating. So if it is 100 amps, it has to be 100 minus uh, 10, 10% uh, uh, of that is 10 amps. So it has to be within 90 amps to 100 amps. So now here if you look at it, the excitation current is 10 amperes. So if it is 100 amps flowing and then 10 amps is the excitation, uh, then the voltage that is developed across the secondary side is given by this, uh, which is about uh, uh, 600 volts here. You can go through and look at it. So what it means is the internally the volt CT can develop about 600 volts um, and then push 100 amps through the burden uh, connected to that, uh, which is 4 ohms in this case and then uh, the accuracy is uh, error is less than is 10% uh, or less. There is another term used by relay engineers knee point. What it says is that the CT remains uh, linear uh, up to that point and then it starts saturating about that point. Uh, the American national standards defines it as a, cur as, a, as a line which is given on the CT excitation curve uh, and then it is at 45 degrees and that point is called the knee point and then uh, you know as you see here if you keep on in apply a voltage to the secondary side and keep on increasing it it uh, linearly goes up to some point afterwards uh, the little change in voltage will increase in a much higher rate of change of current. Uh, IEC defines using that equation so it says that 10 percent increase in voltage results in 50 percent increase in excitation current is, um, is specified as a knee point uh, you know and below that uh, it's almost linear uh, if you look at uh, the previous uh, excitation curve and IEC has other classifications 5p20, 10p20 what it means is it has 5 percent error when uh, the um, when the current is 20 times the rated current on the secondary side a nominal current and then 10p20 is 10 percent error at 20 times the nominal current. There are a lot more detailed uh, classifications in IEC which I am not going in here. It is TPS, TPX, TPY and TPZ. Please refer to the IEC standards uh, documents which explain this in much more detail. Uh, there is one more factor which we look at in the rating factor. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a transformer can get overloaded. Uh, Transformer can get overloaded, uh, uh, you know, to 160 percent for a short time. So the CT also should be able to carry that much current. For example, if you have uh, 1000 to 5 CT, and it can uh, the primary side current can go to 2000 amps for several hours, the secondary side current will be 10 amperes. So the 10 amps is going through the winding of the CT, which has some resistance. It produces some heat. So when you design a CT, you specify the rating and then you limit this voltage rise due to the current flowing on the secondary side. And then that is how the primary the rating factor is defined, defined as, uh, the, uh, as the current that is going on the primary side. Maximum continuous current for a 2005 with a rating factor of 2 is 4000 amps. So the current on the secondary side will be 10 amperes. A rating factor of 3 allows 15 amps on the secondary side. So, uh, you know, this is a, a good example. You try to use it in metering also. We know that in the meters, 10% has a higher error, twice the error uh, than at 100%. So, what we do is, yeah, if it is a 2000 amp circuit, we try to use a 1000 amps to 1000 to 5 CT with a rating factor of 2. Uh, so, at 100 amperes, it will have, say, if it is a 0.3 uh, B1 and 1005 with a rating factor of 2, at 1000 amperes, it has 0.3% inaccuracy, whereas at, uh, uh, you know, at 10, 100 amperes, it will have an inaccuracy of 0.6%, but at 2000 amps, when it is fully loaded, the CT is capable of handling that overload, but its accuracy will still remain at 0.3%. This is very common in metering where they use a lower ratio to, uh, to reduce the errors at very low currents. And then most of the protection class are defined where has got taps. So you can adjust the CTs and this is one of the examples I have given here. 
Now, effect of this tapping on the CT, if you don't use a full rating, if it is a C800, if from X1 to X5, then X1 to X3 uh, will be the, just the ratio of turns to the total number of turns. That will be the voltage that will be developed across this. So, uh, your C rating also reduces and then also your rating factor reduces. As I mentioned, if it is 2, then the current on the secondary side will be 10 amperes and then that still is limited by the type of uh, wire that is used for the winding. So, if it is, uh, uh, you know, if in this case it is four, uh, 400 turns, then uh, if it is 2005, it can, study, it can carry uh, 4000 amps on the primary and 10 amps on the secondary. But if it is, uh, you know, it's only 80 to 1 if you are using that, the primary side, secondary side is still limited to 10 amperes. So, the primary current cannot exceed 800 amperes. Another example I have given here is 320 to 1. The primary current cannot exceed uh, 3200 amperes because the secondary one current will be uh, limited. And other point I want I made here was if the C rating is 800 for the full winding, if you reduce it to 50 percent of the winding, C rating also reduces to 50 percent of that because it is just the ratio of number of turns. The third one which we want to look at is the polarity marking. Uh, this is very important when you have directional relays or when you are trying to protect a bus where the sum of all the currents must be equal to zero. Your directionality, uh, how the current comes into the relay is also very important. So, you have a polarity marking convention. When the current enters uh, this polarity marking on the primary side, the current leaves the polarity marking on the uh, low side. And then uh, you have different designation uh, val numbers, which is given by that if you have multiple CTs, then they are used X, Y, Z, uh, W, and especially in uh, freestanding CTs, you have five cores or six cores, you can use this. Bushing CTs are also designated with a hump as shown here. Uh, as shown here, uh, that is also specified uh, shown in the drawings. If you look at uh, electrical uh, parameters, if you look at uh, yeah, electrical uh, representation, I have a CT here and then I know that there is some excitation current, I can represent it as a shunt across the uh, secondary side winding and then you have got a cable impedance uh, which could be the, just a cable, it could be number 10 uh, AWG. <coughs> which has got a resistance of 1000 ohms per uh, 1000 feet. <coughs> oh, sorry, 1 one ohm per 1000 feet, not 1000. Uh, and also it is on there dependent on the temperature. If the temperature is a little higher in the warmer climates, they use about 1.2 ohms per 1000 feet for that. Electromechanical relays generally have a higher uh, uh, burden. Uh, it offers a higher impedance. So, uh, depends on the relay and the setting. It could be as high as 15.68 ohms, uh, you know, and uh, the, the if you have 15 ohms and if you have 100 amps going through that, then you have 1500 volts developed across, then the CT is only 800, it might saturate. So, higher the burden, uh, there is a likelihood of the CT saturation also, or CT not reproducing the waveform as we need uh, for this. Uh, in the microprocessor based relays, the burden is very low it offers very low impedance uh, to that and most of the times when you use microprocessor based relays it is the cable impedance that comes into picture and that is the one which uh, determines the voltage across the secondary side of the CT. And then uh, that voltage developed across the secondary side of the CT is the one which uh, develops a flux in the magnetic core and flux is just an integral of that. And if the fault current has got, uh, primary fault current has got a DC offset and if you have a resistive burden as an example, uh, in that example, the voltage also will have a DC offset because it is current times the resistive resistance and then and it gets uh, integrated with uh, that and then it produces uh, much higher currents. This is uh, just showing the primary current and then this is the flux, how it uh, develops inside the flux and uh, that flux can reach very high values and then let's go to the next one. The flux increases by a factor of XOR or of the DC offset. So, 
the if the voltage is just uh, with a DC offset, which could be maximum uh, two per unit of uh, the current can go if can be fully offset, and then the voltage also can be fully offset. Uh, that is uh, uh, by because the current is going through a resistive burden as an example. But if you integrate that, then I get one plus x over r times the flux. So if you have a highly inductive system where x over r is seventeen, then the flux increases by 18 times the normal if you have a DC offset. So the, there is a high tendency for the CT to saturate. Here is an example uh, we are taking here. Uh, fault current is 20,000 amps, x over of 17, CT ratio is 2,000 to 5, and the burden is uh, cable resistance and CT, uh, everything we have taken here is 2 ohms. Then the voltage uh, that is uh, that has to be Dev that develops across the secondary side of the CT is 1800 volts and CT is not rated, if it, CT is rated only for 800 volts, it saturates in few cycles, okay, in few power cycles. So if you want to avoid saturation, you have to select such that the burden is much less, uh, you have to use this equation, you know the C rating of that and divided by uh, the burden times 1 plus X over R, so your fault current has to be less than that. <coughs> or the burden has to be reduced to almost nothing to make sure that the C uh, that the uh, voltage that uh, that the CT cannot saturate. So we will uh, stop here and we will uh, look at uh, uh, the, what happens. There is a, a nice uh, uh, document available by uh, at the CT saturation calculator from the IEEE Power System Relaying Committee website. <coughs> it is easier to look at the picture and understand uh, how the CT uh, saturates and when it comes out of saturation. We will cover this in the next class.